Hey folks, uh, I just want to talk about this really interesting study that was recently published. The author's objective was to assess whether the consumption of chlorogenic acid-rich coffee attenuates the effects of short-term fructose overfeeding. Uh, this is a dietary condition known to increase uh, intrahepatocellular lipids and blood triglyceride concentrations and to decrease hepatic insulin sensitivity in healthy humans. And I'll explain what all that means. Uh, in other words, the authors wanted to know if coffee consumption mitigates or blunts insulin resistance induced by a high fructose diet. They also wanted to know if it had any effect on liver lipid levels and blood triglyceride levels. So a little bit of background here. Um, obesity is associated with ectopic lipid deposition in hepatic and skeletal muscle cells. These ectopic lipid stores may result, at least in part, uh, from excessive intake of dietary fats and sugars and are thought to play a role in the pathogenesis of insulin resistance by generating intracellular lipid metabolites that interfere with insulin's actions. Epidemiologic surveys have shown that high coffee consumption is associated with a lower incidence of obesity and type 2 diabetes. Uh, the beneficial effects of coffee are also observed with decaffeinated coffee, suggesting that the components in coffee other than caffeine may play a role in these effects. Of the known active compounds in coffee, polyphenols have been shown to protect against oxidative stress and reduce risk for cardiovascular disorders and diabetes. It has been observed that uh, coffee polyphenols could downregulate lipogenic pathways and reduce liver fat accumulation in mice, suggesting that coffee polyphenols may specifically prevent tissue diet induced ectopic lipid deposition and insulin resistance. Chlorogenic acid, which is a polyphenol present in large amounts in green coffee beans, uh, more so than roasted coffee, has been reported to improve glucose homeostasis, prevent ectopic fat accumulation in high fat fed rodents, and may be responsible for some, for some of the metabolic effects of coffee. In this study, uh, they used the hypercaloric fructose overfeeding protocol, which has been shown to increase intrahepatocellular lipids and reduce insulin sensitivity in healthy subjects. So the study design, uh, the effects of the three different coffees were assessed in 10 healthy volunteers in a randomized controlled crossover trial, meaning they tried all the different diets. Uh, hepatic fat and glucose production and fasting lipid oxidation were measured after 14 days of consumption of caffeinated coffee, either high in chlorogenic acid, decaffeinated coffee high in chlorogenic acid, or decaffeinated coffee with regular amounts of chlorogenic acid. So three different types of coffee. All participants were also studied without coffee supplementation, uh, either with four grams of fructose per kilogram per day, which is labeled as the high fructose only group, or without high fructose as the control group. So here in this first table, um, we're looking at the percentage change in the intrahepatic lipid levels. And the white column is the control group, the black column is the high fructose group, and then the other three columns are the coffee groups. Um, the first one's caffeinated, with high chlorogenic acid. The second is decaffeinated with high chlorogenic acid. And the third is decaffeinated with regular uh, chlorogenic acid. So in this increase in uh, liver lipid levels was only significant in the high fructose group. The coffee did not affect that at all. Um, this is lipid oxidation rate, or the rate at which um, we're burning fat. So you can see in the black column that the high fructose group had a really low um, fat burning rate. And then if you look at the coffee ones, the first and third coffee columns were statistically significant. That's what the red uh, X means. And then the um, decaffeinated high chlorogenic acid had a trend but was not statistically significant. But they all increased the rate of lipid oxidation relative to the high fructose group. So in this third uh, table, you can see that the control group and the high fructose group is nearly double the control group. And then if you look at the, and this is for glucose oxidation, which is the rate at which the body is burning glucose. Um, and this is a proxy for insulin activity. So if you look at the coffee, three coffee groups, you can see all three of them were less than the high fructose group, which means the body was less dependent on glucose oxidation after consuming coffee. And that was statistically significant only for uh, caffeinated high chlorogenic acid and the decaffeinated regular chlorogenic acid. And this third table, this is uh, the glucose production rate. And you can see that the high fructose nearly doubles the uh, glucose production rate. And then you can see the three coffee groups all somewhat decrease that rate, which is also another proxy for insulin activity. And then this final table is just showing the effects of short-term fructose overfeeding and the various coffee intakes on concentrations of the different metabolites related to glucose and lipid metabolism, as well as on skeletal muscle metabolism. I'm not really gonna go over these because uh, there's not any statistical data here, but I, I did, uh, 
circle in red, the insulin levels at the bottom. And you can see that they're slightly higher in the coffee groups um, than they are in the high fructose group, but that was not statistically significant. And that's also true for the next lineup, which is glucose. So the coffee did not change the levels of glucose or insulin. Uh, so in conclusion, coffee consumption appears to attenuate hepatic insulin resistance, but does not increase the hepatic lipid levels induced by fructose overfeeding. This effect does not appear to be mediated by differences in the caffeine or chlorogenic acid content of the coffee. And these effects could not be specifically attributed to those and may be caused by other yet identified uh, active compounds.